Hello everyone! It is my pleasure to welcome you to the Point of Care Long Ultrasound session. In this presentation, we are going to discuss about Long Ultrasound in COVID-19. My name is Ellen Matt and I am currently a clinical fellow at the Emergency Department of the Oxford University Hospitals. One month ago, the World Health Organization announced the pandemic status of the coronavirus infection. The Johns Hopkins University website is tracking statistics from around the world. Here, we see the numbers from the 12th of April. Across the world, emergency and acute care physicians agree. Ultrasound has proven itself to be a reliable and effective tool in both the diagnosis and the management of COVID-19 patients. So, why use POCUS in COVID? First, in COVID-19, terminal alveoli are involved. These are best seen on CT and ultrasound. Second, findings of COVID-19 may be missed in up to 40% of patients who tested positive on PCR. Third, long ultrasound has a similar diagnostic performance to CT thorax. As per the Royal College of Radiology, CT is not recommended as the primary diagnostic modality for COVID-19 and is reserved for complication resulting from this disease. Finally, ultrasound is fast, convenient, radiation-free, easy to disinfect, and can be repeated. In this presentation, we will take you through how to perform a long ultrasound, what normal lungs look like, what to expect in COVID, and by the end of this video, you will be able to incorporate these ultrasound findings in your clinical diagnosis and management of COVID-19 patients. It's all about pattern recognition. The handling technique is the same as auscultation, but you will use your eyes instead of your ears. Just like video games, the more you play, the better you get. Anybody can do this. Special thanks to Dr. Judson Paul for creating this poster for us. Let's find out how to perform a long ultrasound. First, enter your patient's details into the machine. Second, pick your probe. Which one? The answer will vary depending on the resource you read. But we would highly recommend using the curvilinear probe, commonly known as the abdominal probe. It is a low frequency probe that will allow you to see between multiple ribs and deeper. Better for obese patients or with edema. With the long preset of this probe, you'll have a better definition of the pleura. The vascular probe is of high frequency and will help you to see the pleura, but will not allow you to see deep enough. Hi everybody, welcome to this little capsule about some important concepts of ultrasound. First of all, I just want to show you the probe. So this is the abdominal probe, okay? Here you have the marker, okay? So the marker, by convention, will always be towards the head of the patient. So you will hold your probe like that on the patient. Marker towards the head. An important thing here is to understand how ultrasound works. So, marker, let's say that it's your thumb, and the beam of the ultrasound is your hand. So basically, what you're looking at is this. When you're scanning a patient, this is what you see. And it's reported on the screen like that. On the screen, the marker is towards the left, and the marker is here. So, if I repeat, that, boom, okay, this is what you're going to see. So the marker is here. Okay? The closest you are to the probe, the closest you are to the skin. Okay? And the deepest will be towards the inside of the patient. Okay? So make sure you select the right probe. Okay? So this is the probe button. The abdominal probe is here. Okay? Just make sure, I'm just going to do it again. So probe, abdominal one, and then by default, it's always going to be the adult abdo that will be selected. So you can use the long setup 
So then if you click on that, you are in the long setup, ready to do a long ultrasound with an abdominal probe. Good scanning. Then you are ready to enter the patient's room. The patient's position doesn't really matter, as long as the patient is comfortable and you can reach their back. To do so, your patient can turn on their side or sit forward. Place the probe perpendicular to the ribs and scan. Don't forget to annotate and save your images and videos. You must document your findings in the note. Let's look at a video. I'm just going to show you how to save the patient information when you are ready to do a long ultrasound. So you click on patient, you here you put the MRN number, date of birth, gender, okay? The age will already will be reported automatically. You have to put the last name, first name, okay? And down there you click on operator and you type your name then you are ready to scan. We created those body markers here, so six zones per long. So right, let's say, let's say that we want to scan the right, the R1 zone, the first zone on the right side. We re-click on annotate and then you scan. You can save one image of your scanning, okay, by pressing on one time on the save scan, or you can save a clip. To save a clip, you need to press one, then it is recording now, okay? So it is recording. Once you are satisfied by, what, by, by your clip, usually within five, 10 seconds, you press again on this button and then it's saved as a clip. To end this scanning session, are you sure you want to end the current exam? Yes, okay, then you say done. And then you can press on the eye station and see all the last um, ultrasound that have been performed with this machine. Thank you. Here's another video showing how to optimize your images. Okay. okay. So you make it clearer or darker. Okay. And this is where you adjust the depth. Okay. The depth is recorded here on the side of the ultrasound machine. So it's in centimeters. So this is 10 centimeters depth from the surface of the skin towards here. The green arrow, okay, is the focus. Always put the focus on the pleura, okay? So it will be around here, let's say, okay? That's it. Of course, all these features will vary depending on the machine you use, but the principles will remain the same. You are ready to scan. You can start with whichever part of the lung you want. As explained in the video, we would suggest you hold your probe vertically. You'll have a longitudinal view of the chest. On the screen, you will have this view. Rib, lung, rib. And following the ultrasound conventions, if you hold your marker towards the head, you will see your marker on the left side of the screen. If you want to open the view between two ribs, you can rotate your probe 90 degrees anti-clockwise to have a transverse view of the chest. Therefore, you will only see the lung. You will not see the ribs on either side. The probe's marker will be towards the patient's right. For simplicity and uniformity, we highly recommend you to use the longitudinal view. The next video will give you more information on the view you'll have. Let's think about our chest wall. If we start at the top, we've got the skin, and then subcutaneous fat, muscles, intercostal muscles, a rib, then the parietal pleura, the pleural cavity, the visceral pleura. Then we've got pulmonary acinus here. We've got these beautiful little alveoli. We've got interlobular septa, intralobular septa, a pulmonary artery, terminal bronchiole and some lymphatics here. So that's the chest wall. And here it is. We're going to think about it and look. And here it turns into ultrasound. The skin at the top, dermis, subcutaneous fat, intercostal muscles, 
one rib with shadowing behind it because you can't see through ribs, a rib with shadowing, and down to the pleural line. We can see this twinkling, this movement, and below the lung here. So our lung is down here, but actually you cannot see through air with ultrasound. It's like a mirror. So we're only seeing that visceral pleura, the parietal and visceral pleura, but behind that, everything is artifact. About the zones in long ultrasound, let's imagine drawing up a horizontal line along the nipples that cuts through the anterior and posterior axillary lines. This would divide the lung into six zones. Conventionally, these are zone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. It is important to dive into the axilla for the third zone. Scanning both lungs, you will therefore scan a total of 12 zones for each patient you see. These can be graphically reported like this. Here is a proposed sequence for each zone you will scan. First, always find the chest wall and localize the ribs and the pleura. This can be tricky depending on the body habitus of the patient. Then, evaluate the pleural lines the presence of A-lines and comet tails, ruling out a pneumothorax at the same time. Then, as you go deeper in the chest, explore the presence of B-lines, of pleural abnormalities, and of any consolidation. Once you reach the fourth zone on each side, have a look at the presence of pleural effusions. In the next few slides, we will guide you through each of these artifacts in detail. Let's start with the normal lung. It is homogeneous and gray. The pleura lies atop the lung between the ribs. It is a thin, bright and white line with small speckles on it. It moves back and forth with each breath. These artifacts are called the comet tails and are totally normal. Let's talk about A-lines and sliding. Remember that ultrasound is all about artifact. A normal pleural line will act like a mirror and you will see horizontal, equidistant, parallel reverberations of this white line all the way down to the bottom of the screen. These are called A-lines. The physiological pleural fluid allows the visceral pleura to slide on the parietal pleura with each breath. There should be no air preventing this sliding. Therefore, our eyes are able to see the movement called sliding, and it creates those little speckles you can see here. These are the comet tails. You may see a little vertical movement occasioned by the beating heart. This artifact would be called the long pulse. If you have hair between the two pleura, you will not see the A-lines, neither the sliding nor the comet tails. You would have a pneumothorax. Therefore, if you see the normal sliding, the A-lines and the comet tails on each anterior hemithorax when the patient is laying down, you can safely rule out a pneumothorax. What about COVID? What will the lungs look like? First, you will have a patchy distribution of the lesions. It means you can find some areas of normal pleura adjacent to abnormal pleura. The pleura will look irregular and thickened. The diseased interlobular septa will induce the B-lines artifact. The number of B-lines will increase as the disease progresses. Right under the pleura, you can find some subpleural consolidations or deeper, larger alveolar consolidations. The larger ones are mainly seen at the long bases in COVID patients, often with bronchograms. Pleural effusions are quite rare in COVID. 
Here you can see a graphical representation of the patterns of long ultrasound findings from a study done in China. The COVID lesions tend to have bilateral and posterior basal predominance. Therefore, we recommend you to pay attention to the lower lobes, especially the posterior ones, R6 and L6. Always bear in mind the lesions are patchy in COVID, so look everywhere. B-lines are vertical, bright artifacts, starting from the pleura and going down the screen. These are created when the sound beam interacts with a mixture of fluid and gas bubbles. They will keep their energy all the way down in the entire field of view. Here you can see some isolated B-lines. A significant number of B-lines is when you have at least three B-lines within the same intercostal space. The more B-lines you have, wetter the lungs are. In the second video, you can see the confluent B-lines creating a waterfall-like appearance. In COVID, the pleura is also affected. The pleural line is therefore poorly defined, appearing irregular and thickened. It looks nasty and dirty. More examples here. Like with everything else in medicine, the more you see, the better you'll be. Just below the diseased pleural line, you can find some focal peripheral infiltrates. These are some hypoechoic darker collections right below the pleural line. Often, you will find some associated fluid called subpleural effusions. All these findings will vary in size, density and texture, visible as different shades of grey. It is possible that you may not have any findings. Remember, lesions in COVID are patchy. Here is an example of a larger subpleural consolidation. You can find some air bronchograms here. A bronchogram will essentially appear like a black and white chocolate chip cookie within the descending B lines. On the second video, the same subpleural consolidation is scanned, but with the probe in the horizontal orientation. It opens the view and you can better inspect your findings. As COVID progresses, you are likely to find alveolar consolidations deeper in the lung. These have a tissue-like appearance, often described as hepatization of the lung. The lung will resemble the liver. Consolidations are more likely to be found at the lung bases. Consolidation can also be accompanied by bronchograms and or some surrounding effusion. If found at the base of the lung, it will create a pleural effusion. To keep it simple here, is there any consolidation? Yes or no? How will an effusion look like? Remember, liquids produce no echoes on ultrasound. No echo, no reflection. Therefore, liquid appears black or anechoic on ultrasound. Here is a basal pleural effusion. You use the same technique as in fast scan. Your probe is still vertical, longitudinal, as you look at the costophrenic angles on both sides. This is also your long fourth zone. Try to find the best area to see all at once, the base of the lung, the diaphragm, and either the liver or the spleen, depending on the side you scan. This is the view you'll have. If a pleural effusion is there, you will have a black stripe right above the diaphragm. To optimize your view, you can change your probe's preset at this point to the adult abdo one. Here are more examples of COVID patients. On the left, you can see some confluent B lines, commonly called waterfalls. And on the right, a poorly defined and irregular pleura with a subpleural consolidation. More examples. 
features are patchy in COVID, so you can find some normal bits and abnormal bits within the same zone or within the same intercostal space. Varying lesions are found, although rarely in isolation. So, scan far and wide with plenty of gel. The next video will resume the long ultrasound technique. As far as scanning the patient, what I usually do is I'll place the probe with the probe marker facing up and then I'll lawn mower back and forth along the entire anterior lateral and posterior thoracic wall. And notice this whole time I'm able to look at multiple rib spaces, looking at this white line, the white pleural line, and I want to know is there anything different about that white line. Now remember, the most important part is this posterior area. So I'll go down until I know that I'm right at the bottom. So here I've identified the spleen. So I know if I go a couple of rib spaces or maybe one rib space above the spleen, I am in the most dependent portion of the thorax. And then what I'll do is just basically fan back and forth, just like you see here, always making sure to keep an eye on that plural line. Remember, the lung goes all the way up here. Now don't forget to look here in between the scapula and the spine. There's still lung up there. Now let's say you get to a spot right here and you're scanning through and you've identified a little area that has something weird in it. So some kind of like pleural line abnormality right about here. And of course in this patient everything's normal, but let's say that off of this pleural line you see a couple of focal B lines. What I'll do here is I'll turn the transducer transverse in between and look in that intercostal space to better delineate any pathology that I might see there. There we go. Studies show there is a strong correlation between the CT scan and long ultrasound findings. Here they are. A thickened pleura on CT will represent a thickened pleural line on ultrasound. The typical ground glass shadow with effusion will appear like the B lines. The number and confluence increasing as the severity progresses. You will see the subpleural consolidation the same as well as the larger consolidation. The multiloba distribution is correlated as well. Pleural effusions are rarely seen in both modalities. And the described pulmonary infiltrating shadow will be the confluent B lines. Easy, isn't it? Here, Huang et al produced clear images of the CT ultrasound correlation by comparing the findings of both modalities within the same patient. CT showed large patchy reticular softening lesions under the pleura in the posterior basal segment of the right lower lobe, and the linear array probe showed a discontinuous pleural line in the same area with a strip consolidation, air bronchogram sign, and significant signs of interstitial disease with a large number of B lines. Convinced? The point of care ultrasound literature is also clear about its utility in the diagnosis and management of COVID patients. First, you can rule out other diagnoses in a patient presenting with acute shortness of breath. For instance, you can rule out a pneumothorax or evaluate any indirect signs of pulmonary embolism. Furthermore, you could accurately diagnose the cause of an acute deterioration in your patient. For example, a ventilation-induced pneumothorax in a tubed patient, or an acute cardiomyopathy, or a superadded infection. A little note about pre-existing pulmonary fibrosis. You will already see some pleural line thickening with uneven B lines in these patients, even without COVID. So you will have to mainly look for consolidations. For those of you trained with echo, you can evaluate the initial cardiac function of your patient, monitor it as the disease progresses and as you give fluids. This is also a tool in the pronostication in your treatment escalation plan and of course, you can monitor the fluid balance. Is your patient hyper, normal, or hypovolemic? Do they need more or less fluid? You can easily answer all these questions with ultrasound. Another really important concept here is that long ultrasound is reliable for your ventilation strategies. For the long recruitment strategy, 
Two patterns of pathology are usually found in COVID patients with respiratory failure and ongoing or worsening hypoxia. Patients with anterior, bilateral, diffuse and multiple B lines and pleural abnormalities will usually better respond to increased P trials once intubated. However, if you have a patient with posterior lateral or basal atelectasis or consolidations with normal anterior lungs, these patients are likely to respond better to proning. You can also monitor the lung aeration. As the disease progresses, lung will become less aerated over time. So, they will start with A lines when normal, then a few B lines appear, and then lots of B lines likely to become coalescent, and then you will further find consolidations. Finally, long ultrasound is a useful tool to estimate when you will be able to wean your patient off the ventilator. As the disease resolves and the lungs heal, you will see the reappearance of the A lines. Convinced? I hope you are! To conclude this presentation, here are the key learning points. Long ultrasound is easy to learn and to master. It is quick, done bedside, cost-effective and radiation-free. The features that you will find in COVID are characteristic and easy to recognize. Ultrasound is a pattern recognition modality and the more you do, the better you will become. Also, long ultrasound has been found to be more sensitive than chest X-ray and there is a good correlation between CT and ultrasound findings. To perform the long ultrasound, simply take the abdominal probe, select the long preset and scan far, deep and everywhere. Finally, long ultrasound can be used to support your diagnosis as a risk stratification tool as well as being of great help in your patient's management. Here are the references used for this video. And finally, Thank you so much for listening to this presentation. Please do get in touch. Don't hesitate to ask us any questions or if you'd like to practice some scans with us, let's go. Scan, save, treat and repeat. We have created a learning and resources Dropbox on long ultrasound in COVID. I'd like to especially thank Dr. Priya Marate for all her help while creating this video. Please, don't forget to disinfect your machine and to fill the post video questionnaire. Thanks again and happy scanning!